Aesthetics have become a new way to label everything. Every brand sells a new aesthetic to their consumers. You can buy a new mold for yourself whenever you want. You can rebrand yourself however you want. Just buy all of the things from the ads and you will become a new you. It's exhausting but extremely marketable. A quick solution to more severe issues. The aesthetics don't necessarily connect the people in a more meaningful way other than, oh, I like the look of it. It's very shallow most of the time and weirdly individualistic. Which is very interesting because people most of the time want to feel included and belong to a community. But these aesthetics don't even unite people on a deeper level. It is not the main purpose. Aesthetics originally were associated with the philosophy of art and how art is perceived. The word aesthetic is derived from the ancient Greek word meaning perception or sensation. Philosophers were contemplating what classifies things as beautiful. Then each era developed a very specific aesthetic that closely connected the philosophical trends at the time. It was less individualistic and more focused on the group. Later in time, many different artistic movements have emerged. Groups of artists wanted to go the opposite way of what was taught in art schools and what was considered proper at the time. Thanks to them, instead of having only still life paintings in the 19th century, we can appreciate the very different and now widely loved styles such as Impressionism. The groups have started to become more and more individualistic, groups that were not necessarily connected by art, but by certain aesthetic. I'm talking here about different subcultures that have appeared throughout the years during our modern times. This group of people shared certain characteristics not related to art per se, but shared for example the same behavior, values, beliefs, consumption patterns and lifestyle choices. It was important that everything they do differs from the mainstream culture. Nowadays the culture of subcultures has basically died out. We have modern aesthetics on the rise and there are hundreds of them. There is a label for every little thing you can think of. They are not about the philosophy of art. They have little to no interest in art to be fair. They are not about creating groups, they are not about the sense of belonging, they are not about creating something different, but what they are is just peak consumerism culture. You have stores, websites and brands solely dedicated to a certain modern or internet aesthetic. You can go to certain stores to buy a certain look. It doesn't really matter if you're even interested in the thing at all, but you can get the look. You can look as if you can be perceived in a certain way. You can artificially create your new brand. And you do not need a group of people to back you up. You don't need a community. You don't need to send the message. It's all about you. You and how to influence you. And how to get your money. Today the color black is trending, here is a full pack of all the necessary items and accessories you will need for your dark academia core aesthetic. Tomorrow white will be in fashion, so you need to start living your soft life and buy all of the white cotton dresses and rebrand yourself as the cottage core soft girl. Some time ago I drew an illustration of Aphrodite and one of you guys commented and gave me an idea to draw more goddesses from the mythology, so here I am. For this artwork I decided to focus on Persephone, just because I wanted to draw something with flowers and tulips for spring. In this video I will focus more on the aesthetics associated with Persephone rather than the actual myth. I don't know why, but my first thought about Persephone is always how she pulled both aesthetics off so well. She was the queen of dark and light. She ruled the underworld and was the goddess of spring. Two very conflicting aesthetics. However, because both of the aesthetics create her full story, she is not defined by one or the other. 
they both go in harmony together and create a very unique combination. I think a lot of people constantly overthink their personal style, especially now when we are always bombarded with new trends and styles to choose from. And it doesn't matter what type of style, their art style, their dress style, how they act, home decor, anything and everything. There are plenty of videos on YouTube on how to create or achieve a certain type of style and you can just go online, buy all of their new shiny accessories and voila, has your new different style. Then people are still unhappy because it's not really personal. Now you just look like a copy from a mold. Now you just look like, insert an aesthetic name here. Personal style, whatever it relates to, cannot be fabricated. There is no formula, it's a mixture of who you are. Which is what I think is so hard for people to grasp, because it's not easy to be fully yourself. Of course you will always be influenced by different people, media and experiences, but that is what will essentially form your personal style. It should show you as a person. Before publishing this video, I showed a preview of this drawing of Persephone in my community tab and I asked who you think it is. The first answer I got was correct, which made me really happy, but it just showed how the simply distinctive style makes the character so unique. A lot of famous people have that one specific look that they have been repeating for years, which is now so characteristic for them that we immediately know who that is just by looking at the silhouette or a certain item. To give some examples, Anna Winter, her bob's hairstyle and sunglasses, Donatella Versace, blonde, dramatic eye makeup, Steve Jobs, black turtleneck, jeans. No matter what is trending, this is their look and this is what they're known for. Moreover, as in these examples, of course, all of those people are rich, but to have a signature style does not have to be extravagant or expensive. It's just the constant repetition of the things you like and feel good in, or feel good presenting to the world. I tried to make this artwork similar to my previous Aphrodite drawing, to create a continuation or a series of artworks with the mythology theme. My characters are usually expressionless, Hello Kitty style. <laughs> I decided to draw Persephone also looking down, thinking and contemplating. My Aphrodite drawing has a very simple background as I wanted to focus more on anatomy and flowers. And for my Persephone drawing I wanted to include some elements of Greek architecture. I decided to go with the Caryatid, which is a female figure taking the place of a column. In the myth, Persephone had her own personal companions, whom then Demeter turned into half-bird sirens as punishment for failing to prevent her daughter's abduction. I thought the female pillars of the Caryatid could represent how none of them did anything to help her, thus acting as marble statues. I also painted roses in the background as both the symbol of spring and the symbol of Persephone herself, delicate but with thorns. I also wanted to repeat the same technique I used to paint the roses in the drawing with Aphrodite, just so the two artworks may look like a series. However, in the Aphrodite drawing, I used them as a symbol of beauty and femininity. If you would like to see the time-lapse of the Aphrodite drawing and how I drew the roses, you can check out my blend mode tutorial or go to my short page. You do need to go there directly because YouTube decided it's inappropriate to promote. LOL. My previous train of thought video was very well received, so I decided to make something similar. Half essay, half stream of consciousness. Maybe I will make more videos like this in the future. These are kind of fun, I treat them like diary entries. I hope you enjoyed this video, please share your thoughts about the modern aesthetics or about my artwork in the comments.